Today we're going to talk about sharpening blades, okay? How to sharpen blades. This is how I sharpen blades. I was asked to do this video, so I'm doing this video for a subscriber. And she's come back a couple times asking for it, so I said, I will do it, and I'm going to do it tonight. You can use this, an 8-inch bench grinder or similar. They come with a softer wheel and a harder wheel, like different cores, okay? I don't like these. I don't like using these. It's, I just feel like I'm going to get the blade caught in there and freehand it. I just don't like it. I'm not comfortable using these. Never been comfortable using these. Use these my entire life. I mean, used them since I was in high school. Use these to sharpen blades. Then I figured out there's got to be a better way than there is. Less expensive and it does a better job, in my opinion. And it's much faster, easier to store. You don't have to worry about this monstrosity. And your lights don't dim when you get the blade stuck in the damn thing. Um, so let's get rid of it. All right, so what do I use to sharpen blades? I use a four inch or four and a half inch angle grinder. That's what I use. I link to it below, okay? And I use four inch or four and a half inch, whatever you want to use, whatever's convenient to you, cut blades, okay? These, these are called cut blades. These aren't the thick metal cut, metal grindings. These, this one isn't for metal grinding. This is, look how thin that is. It's a sixteenth of an inch, all right? I call it a soft blade, although it's not soft. It's brittle. If you push it, you can snap it. But it's reinforced with fiberglass, and it's used for cutting. What I do is I use the edge to sharpen the blade. It's more forgiving. It just feels better. It feels like it's hugging the blade as it's sharpening. It just feels better than that thicker, hard grinding wheel. So look below this video in the description and I'll have the cut saw blades there, the cutting wheel, four inch cutting wheel and the four inch grinder. All right, that'll be there. That's what I use. Now let me show you how. Right off the bat, let me say, please always wear your safety glasses, some type of eye protection when you're using metal, when you're sharpening metal because one little teeny piece of metal gets in your eye, you're screwed for a long time and you'll, it'll even rust in your eye and you'll get a rust ring in your eye and then they gotta go in with the little diamond scraper thingy and clean your eyeball out. That happened to me a really, really long time ago. It's not fun. It freaking hurts. Um, so make sure you wear some type of eye protection and be very, very careful. All right, guys? Anywhere that you shoot your sparks is metal in the air. Anywhere it lands will rust. So if you're in your garage and you're sharpening lawnmower blades, and you're doing it right next to your old lady's car, you're going to rust her car. You're going to have little teeny metal fragments flying through the air, and you're like, ooh, pretty sparklers. Well, those sparklers land as little teeny metal flakes that are not protected by any paint or any type of protection. I mean, what ends up happening is you turn around and rust whatever it lands on. It just starts to rust, okay? So be really careful where you point it. Make sure your vehicles and anything that you care about are not around. Um, watch out for your pets, your kids, your wife, your boyfriend, your neighbor, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's boyfriend, your boyfriend, your wife's boyfriend, your girlfriend's girlfriend. Be careful for all of those people. Anyone else pretty much who cares. I think we covered it all, so pretty much. I don't know. So you need to make sure that you got everything right and safe. And that starts with your eye protection. So, how do we do this? We got two different types of blades. Now, I don't have the um, the Ninja and or the Honda um, blades that are kind of like a cross blade. I don't have those to do, so I can't demonstrate those. But I do have regular straight blades, and I have your three-in-one blade. Your regular straight blade simply is a straight blade. Okay. That's used just your standard blade, whether it's high lift, low lift, or gator blade. You got your straight blade going across here, okay? That's pretty much easy, pretty self-explanatory on how to do that. Then you have your three-in-one blade. This is your mulching blade. This has your extra little thing here, and then it goes down. So you gotta sharpen the cutting edge, the angle going up, this going here, and then depending on your blade type, possibly a little bit more here. But what we do with my blades, we concentrate right here, we go down, and we go across. For this, this is pretty dull too. And I wanted it to be pretty dull because I wanted this to be like what you're going to be dealing with as a side hustle or as a homeowner trying to figure out how to sharpen blades and what to use. 
So, hey, this is real world stuff here. This is my Troy build. All right, guys, when it comes to sharpening blades, there's something I want you to pay attention to, and that's going to be the angle of the dangle. All right, right here, you got the angle of your blade. If I put it this way, Maybe you guys can see that. See the angle of the cut right here? You see how this is on an angle? We're gonna make up a number. We're gonna say this is a 30 degree angle right here, where this would be 90 degrees, this would be 45 degrees, this might be 30 degrees. I don't know, it could be 20, it could be 23, it could be 32, I don't know. But we're gonna say it's 30 degrees. Whatever this blade is set at is pretty much the manufacturer's suggested angle of where you want this to be, okay? So you wanna keep that 30 degree angle going all the way, all the way, and all the way. In order to do that, I use the four inch angle grinder and I literally freehand it and I go by feel. It takes practice, but that's how I do it. That's the truth. When it spins, it spins the other way. You see that? So when it spins, if I hit it at like the 11 o'clock position right here, the sparks are gonna fly out and away from my body. I'm going to hold the grinder in my hand and I'm just going to go slowly back and forth across the metal and I'm going to try to maintain that 30 degree angle of the cutting surface and I'm going to adjust the angle of the, of the grinder in order to accomplish that. My goal is to go from one end all the way to here, get a nice clean sharp edge following that 30 degree angle. Then as I hit this curve right here, I'm going to follow that curve up and I'm going to use the back side of the grinder and then I'm going to roll it and continue my 30 degree angle on the top part. All right, It's all by feel. That's why I like to use these 4 inch um, angle grinders over 8 inch bench grinders because I can do it with my hand a lot easier than I can move this around on those big old wheels. So let's go ahead. Let's put a sharp edge on this and I'll show you some tips and tricks as we move along. Okay, we got a pretty good angle here. We pretty much followed it. You saw we were freehanding, and we pretty much got this nice and sharp, actually. It's not too sharp, but it's nice and sharp. Now, we still got some minor burrs in here, like some little things and stuff that you can work out if you're really that interested. But just understand, the more that that grinding wheel is on this blade, the more you're wearing the blade down. Eventually, you're gonna run out of angle. You're not gonna be able to go all the way across for years and years and years. They make very expensive blade sharpening machines that put like the perfect angle and the blades will last a really, really, really long time. Not sure you need something like that for a side hustle. Um, you might sharpen your blades once or twice a month and one blade will last you probably almost all season. So, I mean, what's a $20 blade? It would take you 10 years of blade saving to get to maybe the sticker price of one of those fancy blade sharpeners. Now. 
if you got machines that have three, four blades and you got two or three machines, okay, that's a different story. But side hustle, I'm talking to you guys. Save your money. Get yourself a little grinder and then learn how to freehand it, just like I did. You saw how easy I went and just follow that angle. Now, one more thing that you can do is the bottom of the blade right here, you might have some burrs or something like hanging down. One quick little pass on the bottom of the blade. Watch this. The only reason why I did that was to make sure that I didn't have any metal like if you hit something and then it's like bird going down and up and then you sharpened it and you still have the down going. So now we're like really sharp. When I sharpen blades, I don't go razor sharp. Cause if you go razor sharp, then you're super thin and the cutting edge will dull really, really fast if you go razor sharp. Um, wet grass, one lawn, you're gonna dull your blade out really, really fast. The idea is to just, as your blade dulls from use, it goes flat. You see how flat this is? There's not much of a cutting edge. See how small this silver is? Contrast that to this. See how much more, see how it's silver here? There's more cutting angle. It's the angle that 30 degrees or that 23 degrees or whatever this degree is, it's that nice degree, that's what slices your grass. Not necessarily a razor sharp edge. Razor sharp edge at first, but when that goes dull, now you got a square hitting the blade. So the, the idea is to keep an angle on your blade and you're sharpening an angle. You're not necessarily making a razor. That's easy to do. You could just go from the bottom and come from the top, make a quick razor and you're done. You got super set of sharp blades and you're like, wow, I can slice paper. Fantastic, that blade will be shit by lunch. That's the problem. It'll be, it'll, it'll be dull by lunch. There'll be no more angle. The idea is keep the angle. You got me? All right, let me shut up. Let me do some sharpening. If I don't mention this one last thing, I'm gonna get beat up by a lot of people in the comments section. Um, balancing your blade. When you're done sharpening your blade, you've now removed metal from your blade, from both ends of your blade. It's also, it's been whacked, it's been hacked, um, it's worn down from sand and dirt, and it's not even. An uneven blade will cause an unnecessary vibration on the shaft of your lawnmower when you have like a 20 inch, okay? These mount directly to the crank. That's, that is the crank. The crank has your um, rod and bearings and all that crap connected to that crank. If that blade's out of balance and it's causing unnecessary vibration and wear on the crank as it's spinning at 18,000 RPM or whatever, then um, maybe not 18,000 RPM, but you know what I'm saying. When, when that engine's spinning at whatever the RPM is of that engine spinning, what is it, tw uh, four stroke, uh, 2800 RPM maybe, 3000 RPM. Um, if this blade's out of balance, you're wearing your bearings down really fast on that crank and you're gonna start wearing your seals down. That's how you start having issues and then you start getting weird vibrations and the next thing you know, your crank is, is wobbled and wallowing because you didn't balance your blades. Now, let me say this to you guys. I'm 46 years old. I know I don't look a day over 45. I'm 46 years old. I've never balanced a blade in my life. I've never had a crank fall out of a mower. I've never had a spindle blow apart on me. With that said, I guess it can happen. So, when you sharpen a blade, you wanna go ahead and take like a small nail, um, something that's small, not something big. You're not gonna use this, like this way of course, but you're gonna use something that's small, like this, and you wanna balance the blade and you wanna see what's it doing. You see how it's angling down this way? Too heavy on this end. So you're gonna to wanna to take just a little bit off. You can do it.
Pick a spot on the blade, anywhere you want. Take a little bit of metal off. Don't do it to the wing. You can continue to sharpen it if you want or do like I did. I just took a little bit off the back edge here and now it's perfect. Let me make sure it's not cheating. It's better. It's not quite as low on this side. So you can keep going, okay? That's how you balance a blade. Take a little bit of metal off and, it, and, and not on the wing, not on the tip, but somewhere like maybe a little bit on the corner right here or sharpen it down a little bit more. Just take a little bit of metal off, very light, and then rebalance. You can use a 16th penny nail. If you have pegboard in a shop and you got pegs that hold your wrenches and stuff, you can stick this on, on a pegboard. You can use a little round uh, awl or round uh, star, you know, Phillips head screwdriver. Anything that you could just find to balance and make that thing balance. Um, some people make it an exacting science. I don't. Like I said, I've been doing this since high school with a break from military service and then back to doing this again. I never balance blades. If it's not obviously something that, you know, I mean, you'll know. I mean, I've never, ever, ever, ever sat there and balanced blades after I sharpened them. But I know people will beat me up, but dude, it's real. I'm telling you the honest to God truth. Mechanics are gonna beat me up and, and please, I mean, I'm telling you people to balance your blades. But if you don't, don't lose sleep over it. Just the next time you sharpen them, if you can take that quick second that I just showed you, just a quick second, make sure that you're good, then you'll be better off, okay? It's kind of hypocritical for me to say because I don't ever balance my blades, but textbook will tell you you'll be better off. So I'm telling you, you'll be better off. So balance your blades, all right? That's how I sharpen them, that's how I balance them. And, uh, yeah.